I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired. The Battle of the Philippine Sea in June of 1944 was one of the great air naval encounters of the last war. A combined total of 170 American and Japanese warships and almost 1,500 planes engaged in a battle on which the fate of the Empire rested. And yet, even before these great armadas clashed, the seeds of defeat for the Japanese fleet were planted by a single American submarine. The name of that submarine was the USS Harda. After armies have fought, the wreckage and scars remain on the battlefield for generations to come. But the sea hides her wounds, and neither cross nor plaque ever marked the spot where ships and men died in combat. And memories grow short. Great deeds are buried in the dust of history. Camp Dealey on the island of Guam was a beautiful rest center for submariners. It is all but forgotten now. But the man it is named for, Commander Sam Dealey of Santa Monica, California, occupies a permanent niche in the Submarine Hall of Fame. It was Commander Dealey and his officers and men of the Harda who alone forced the Japanese fleet to leave its anchorage prematurely and thus completely upset Admiral Ozawa's operational plan on the eve of the Battle of the Philippine Sea. I must say you eat well on this boat, Sam. Oh, that was just pot luck. You forgot the good food in those long patrols. I'm glad to hear that. I'm going to be with you. Well, they must be out. Oh, excuse me. My name is Dealey. What's yours? Hauser, sir. Uh, Torpedo Man, third class, reporting for duty. I'm glad to have you aboard. I hope you'll like it here. Yes, sir, I'm sure I will, Captain. Thank you very much. Uh, new replacement. Uh -huh. Now, what's this all about? I'm going to make the next patrol with you. So you said. Why? It's just that the Admiral believes we'll do a better job on staff if we have a little first-hand experience. Oh, sure. Just routine. Our force commander has put top priority on all enemy destroyers. We've got orders to scout the Japanese fleet at Taui Taui. So our force operation officer picks his time to go along as, a, as an observer. Don't tell me there isn't something brewing. All right, I won't. Oh, sure. We're going to find out all about it after it happens. You know it's got to be like that, Sam. You guys operate so close to the enemy, you could reach out and shake hands with him. If you should happen to be captured, and well, that could easily happen. The Japanese would have everything you know in 24 hours. That's why you never told anything. Then what are you doing on a patrol? Huh? The Japanese know something's up. What they don't know is when, where, or how. This time, neither do I. Gentlemen, this will be a joint Army, Navy, and Marine operation under the command of Admiral Nimitz. The code name is Porager. All of you have a copy of the directive issued on March 12 by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The 5th Fleet will be commanded by Admiral Spruance, the Carrier Forces by Admiral Mitcher, and the Joint Expeditionary Force by Admiral Turner. The objective is the capture of the Marianas. Saipan, Tinian, and Guam for the support of attacks on Japan. The rendezvous point will be Majura Atoll, and D-Day for the landing on Saipan will be June 15. The purpose of this conference is to anticipate, if possible, enemy counter moves. Japanese plans captured on Hollandia place the mobile fleet, probably under the command of Admiral Ozawa, in Tawi Tawi. It must be assumed that they will accept battle to defend the Marianas. If so, they will steam eastward, south of Mindanao, or through one of these passages into the Philippine Sea. Admiral Spruance will protect our landing on Saipan and Guam, in which case we can expect a full-scale naval battle in this area. Such a battle could be decisive. Now, 
Well, I'll say this for you, Sam. You're always playing an aggressive game, if nothing else. <laughs> Are you conceding? No. No, I'm going to let you walk into the trap. It's the only way I'll ever learn. This is a game of science, not luck. On May 26, the Harder departed from Fremantle, Australia, on her fifth war patrol. One of her assignments was to pick up a team of British agents who had been operating on the northeast coast of Borneo. Other than that, it was a routine patrol. If a patrol in enemy waters is ever routine. Commander Dealey is Executive Officer Frank Lynch of Kansas City, Missouri, a first string tackle at the Naval Academy, and Sam Logan, the torpedo officer who had put the ship in commission, were experts in the art of undersea warfare. The harder was a veteran a crew trained to a peak of fighting perfection. This was the background for what has been termed the most epic-making war patrol ever recorded. I'm the captain, Sam Dealey. I'm Major Jordan. I'm sorry to impose on you. Not at all. You must have thought nobody was coming. Well, as a matter of fact, we were getting a little jumpy. We've missed contact with three of your boats. Mm -hmm. Your uh, men in good shape? Well, we've all had a touch of malaria. Jungle's a miserable place. I can't say we'll be sorry to see Australia again. Well, I'm afraid that's going to be some time. We just started on this patrol. Oh, I see. Well, that's all right. I've always wanted to see you submarine chaps in action. Every ship in that convoy is in Neuler. And headed away from Towie Towie. What do you make of it, Captain? Must be going to fuel somebody up at sea. Uh-oh. Looks like this guy means business. What would you estimate the range to be? Oh, I'd say 9,000 yards. He's making pretty good time, isn't he? About 24 knots, maybe a little better. Wouldn't you say he's gaining on us? No question of that. I doubt the harder can top 19 knots. If you gentlemen don't mind, I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull a plug. Clear the bridge! I say, what's the, uh, the usual procedure in a situation like this? When a destroyer's coming after you, you get the devil out. Destroyers are sub-killer, Major. They're too dangerous to pull around with and too small to shoot easily. So we try and avoid them. Ordinarily. The Japanese have a critical shortage of destroyers right now. If we can make that shortage more critical, we'll hamper their fleet movement. Range mark 2550. Oh. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. At 2,500 yards, a harder changed course to the left, pulling away from the path down which she had been running. This gave Captain Dealey the angle he needed to shoot, but it also brought the sub broadside to the destroyer. The enemy picked up this strategy on his sound gear. The harder was in for an immediate attack. Here he comes right down our way, right across our stern in a minute. Angle on the bow, port 60. Very mark, two, four, eight. Range mark, one, one, five, oh. Set. Fire seven. Fire eight. Surface. Shooting sand. Put us back on course for that convoy. All ahead, full. Aye, aye, sir. It's quite a simple operation after all. That chap never got off one shot. Where do you think that 
convoy's headed, Captain? I don't know, Frank. If it is a supply force, their fleet must be getting ready to move out. The question is, should we double back to Tawi Tawi or keep back to the convoy? We can find out where their fleet's going by trailing the convoy to the refueling point. No, that's not too good, Frank. We haven't located the convoy. We're not certain that it is a supply force. They might be making for Davao. We sure find ourselves way out in the left field. Yeah, I guess you're right, Captain. The main job is to watch Tawi Tawi. Yeah. You want to change course? Radar contact. Looks like the convoy. Station of tracking party, where is it? Almost due east, sir. About 14,000 yards. Course, 160. Come around to 175, all ahead flank. We'll start an end around. We can get ourselves loose in that convoy. We'll make any difference where they're going. The boogie-type destroyer responded our school. Range mark, 2,000 yards. Hang on the bow, zero. All stop. All stop. Frank, down the throat shot. Fast screws bearing 090, short scale pinging. Two of them up there. We'll worry about the other one later. Up scope. Range mark, 1500 yards. Still coming. Time to give another look at it. Stand by in the forward tubes. Barry Mark, zero. Range Mark, 1,000 yards. Good. Fire one. Fire two. How long? Well, at this range, about 30 seconds. If you don't hear an explosion by then, you better send the shortest prey you know. Fire three. Check fire. All ahead full. 30 seconds after the first shot was fired, the destroyer was hit squarely amidships. Number two struck just a little further aft. Number three missed altogether. The fourth one wasn't needed. Captain Dealey maneuvered frantically to get clear of the exploding destroyer. At a range of no more than 300 yards, the harder was rocked by the destroyer's magazine going up. Captain? Confirmation. Hey, she's dead all right, Sam. Fine shooting. Did you have to wait so long? Fast screws close aboard. He's starting his run. There's two of them. All three. There's another. And another six in the line of Barry. Take her down. Six of them. I guess we're getting kind of powder. They've got claws too, Major. So I see. What do you do about it? You burrow deep. Wait for them to go away. Lucky that explosion was bended upwards. Would have pounded us right into the mud. Sorry there wasn't time to give you a look, Major. She went down faster than we did. The sinking of the second Japanese destroyer in two days by the harder occurred on June the 7th. Two days later, June the 9th, unknown to Commander Dealey or his men, the United States Fifth Fleet sailed westward for the invasion of the Marianas. The Harder, having lost contact with the convoy, headed up Sibatu Passage towards the Japanese fleet anchorage at Tawi Tawi. Oh. How'd you go back to sleep, Sam? Just gonna wait. I get plenty of time for sleep between moves. <laughs> I'll see now. I think I've got you this time. Captain to the bridge. If this patrol lasts long enough. <laughs> what have you got? Two destroyers. 
That's the narrowest part of Cebu to, Captain. We're gonna have trouble getting past them. Only two of them, those are not bad odds. Battle station torpedo, stand by to dive. Uh, Major, how's the malaria? Oh, could be worse, thanks. Glad to hear that. You look a little yellow around the gills. Oh, that's the, uh, the Atabrin. What's happening up top? I think Sam's after another tin can. Let's go up and take a look. Both destroyers are zigging. Down scope. I'm gonna start shooting the first one at 1,200 yards with a spread of four pickles forward. Then we'll swing around for a new setup on the second destroyer using a stern tube. Aye, aye, Captain. You get that, Logan? What's he doing now? 1,200 yards. If he goes much closer, he can just pass the torpedo up to them on a winch. He was 1,000 yards yesterday and it rattled our IT. I will remember. But this time he's taking on two of them at once. Stand by forward. I'm on the leading ship. Hold it, hold it. They're overlapping. Just what the doctor ordered. Fire! One's away. Two's away. Right full of rudder, stand by on the stern tube. Stand by aft. 40 seconds. 45. Rudder amidships, steady as you go. 50 seconds. Number one passing just ahead of near target. Number two hit the bow. Another hit just under the bridge. Number four passed the stern. Number four didn't miss, he got the second one. Secure the stern tubes. Here to have a look, gentlemen. Both of them going down. It's a beautiful sight, Sam. Major. Well, I, I certainly have seen some action. <laughs> Take her down to 300 feet. Only a few miles from Tawi Tawi. Got our planes over 30 minutes. The last message from the Harder reported a convoy steaming in the general direction of Davao. It's possible this is also a supply force moving into the Philippine Sea. No report of any fleet movement? Not yet, sir. There's been nothing from that area since last night. Except Tokyo broadcasts. They're saying the largest submarine task force of the war is operating off Tawi Tawi. They've already sunk a half a dozen. How much truth in it? It's a slight exaggeration. The only boats there are the red fin in the harder. On June the 11th, the formation of the U.S. carrier groups was 200 miles east of Guam. At 1300, with the launching of planes for the preliminary bombardment of airfields on Saipan, Operation Forager was underway. The men of the 5th Fleet were cheered on by the news of the invasion of Normandy under General Dwight D. Eisenhower. The target date for the landings on Saipan was June 15th. It was expected that Admiral Ozawa would come to the defense of the island as soon as he could get into position. Accurate information on the Japanese fleet was imperative. Getting underway. Battleships, cruisers, whole fleet's moving out. Good. Maybe they're finally going to fight. You better get a report off, Sam. Admiral Spoons has been waiting for this since midway. We're going to have to wait. We've got a fight of our own. Turn count of 35 knots. Down a throat shot again. Range mark. 3,000 yards. Hang on about zero. We'd better hit him, Captain, or he's coming right inside. He's slowing down, Captain. Turn count, 15. We'll tease him along. Up, scope. He's still coming. Steady. Range mark. 1,500 yards. Stand by. Set. Fire one. Set. Fire two. Set. Fire three. All ahead full, right full rudder. Take her down emergency. 
If the torpedoes missed, Harder had only a little over a minute to gain depth before the destroyer would be right on top of her. She tilted her nose down and started the agonizingly slow plunge to the protection of the depths. At a bare 80 feet, she would be directly under the charging destroyer. No longer able to see what was happening on the surface, the men could only wait and listen. You heard, Major? No, I don't think so. I wonder what happened. The store's magazine or boilers, or maybe both. You sure you're all right? Oh, quite. Would you mind taking us back to Borneo? The jungle was never like this. At the first opportunity, Commander Dealey radioed Pearl Harbor that the enemy had steamed out of Tawi Tawi. The hardest unparalleled achievement of torpedoing five destroyers in six days had panicked Admiral Ozawa. He was convinced that a submarine task force of unprecedented magnitude was operating off Tawi Tawi, and his ships were no longer safe there. His departure on the night of June 13th was 24 hours ahead of schedule. As a result, the mobile fleet wandered aimlessly around in the Philippine Sea, where they were spotted by other submarines. The Japanese timetable had been upset, and Admiral Spruance had the information he wanted. The Japanese fleet was still milling around when the Joint Expeditionary Force went ashore on Saipan. The U.S. Fifth Fleet moved into position west of the island and launched carrier planes. On June 19th, with the Marianas ticket shoot, the Battle of the Philippine Sea was joined. dropped like plums. On that day alone, the Japanese lost 346 planes out of a total of 476. On the same day, the submarine Alva Corps torpedoed and sunk the Tai Ho, the newest and biggest carrier in the Japanese Navy. It was also Admiral Ozawa's flagship. Another submarine, the Kabbalah, sank the fleet carrier Shokaku. Carrier aircraft sent Hitaka to the bottom. By the evening of June 20th, with all but 35 planes shot down and three carriers sunk, the defeated and dispirited Japanese fleet fled to the safety of Okinawa. The great battle was over. For his achievement in torpedoing five enemy destroyers and upsetting the Japanese plans, Dealey was awarded the Army Distinguished Service Cross by General Douglas MacArthur. And when the news reached the United States, President Roosevelt awarded Dealey the Congressional Medal of Honor. The award was made posthumously, for on August the 24th, 1944, the harder was lost with all hands off the west coast of Luzon. There are no white crosses on the sea. Camp Dealey on Guam is deserted and all but forgotten. But the submarine known as Hit Him Again Harder and her gallant captain, Commander Sam Dealey, are recorded for all time in the log of the silent service. I'll be back in a moment. The award of personal decorations in this country depends primarily upon the degree of bravery displayed, with the Medal of Honor being awarded for heroism above and beyond the call of duty. Some nations have put another qualification on their highest award. The act for which it is awarded must have been not only heroic, but it must have materially affected the strategic situation in the area involved. Let's see how the heart are measured up to these standards. As for heroics, just look at the attack that sank the destroyer headed directly for them. It takes nerve to look at the knife-like bow charging directly at you and fire coolly, the kind of nerve that separated Sam Dealey from virtually all of the rest of us. You've seen the profound effect that this one submarine had on the Battle of the Philippine Sea, so it qualifies for the highest award under any system. Most submariners consider this patrol of the USS Harder the finest piece of submarining in history. One thing is certain, you'll look far before you find a better example of the mouse devouring the cat. Please join us again for another true and thrilling story of the silent service. Take her down, and up the line, through the deep blue, underneath the ocean, we'll control the ocean wide, from down, down, underneath the sea.
beneath the ocean, there the sand will find me now, in the deep blue underneath the sea.